What's up guys, I just wanted to do a quick update on the tank build. We're starting out running basically all heavy armor again this time. Um, they changed it so the armor rating on pieces in the expansion is all even split. So there's no more specking for just physical or elemental. So everything's going to be even across the board. So don't worry about your armor rating like we did last time. Um, enchanted ward slash conditioning and health is pretty much on every piece except my chest. I only needed four slash conditionings to reach uh, the fortify cap for slash damage. So that's what we're going with right now. Um, chest is running refreshing. I try to max that out on all pieces that I could. Trying to get that CDR pretty nice. We're running Odo just for the heal. And we were going to run any flail, so having life stealing and refreshing move is, is pretty decent, so that's just what we went with. There's not really any other tank weapon artifact that fits well. We're going to wait for Ennead to drop later this week and pick up the wall, and that'll give us 35% um, magic damage negation, which is a really strong point of this build. Uh, so we're running sure footing and plague crits um sure footing is just to keep up with the team while we're keeping block up because we want to provide that 30 percent uh damage mitigation to our bruisers while they're moving from points to point um whether that be in war or opr last perk you'd probably want refreshing move amulet uh we're running stam fortified and health uh ring we're running enfeebling refreshing and hardy keeping that weaken up on both our shield and our flail is really nice Endless Thirst with Regeneration, just keeping that self-heal up really high. Um, we're popping pots out the wazoo. We've got the Fortified Toast. We're chugging Infused Mana Pots. Depending on what content I'm doing, I switch out uh, Oak Flesh Balm and Gemstone Dust. So we'll swap around those. We're sticking with the Healing Stone form. And that's pretty much where we're going from here, guys. Going on to Weapon Trees, we're sticking with the same for Sword and Shield. Nothing here has changed. For flail, we're going with this tree now. Um, this is going to provide us fortify on pretty much everything. On the smite, it provides us 30% fortify for 6 seconds. On barrage, it provides fortify to not only ourselves but all allies for 20% for 8 seconds in 2.5 meters, which is a pretty big distance. Then with uh, warding bludgeon, we're also picking up uh, a damage absorption for nearby allies and an empower for one nearby ally, which is really good. Um, and then we're taking the Keystone Human Shield. Our mitigation is so high that any squishy, like, taking damage, we take, like, barely anything. So, something that would chunk them for, you know, half of their health bar, it takes us for a 30th of ours. So, that's kind of just what we're going with right now. Alright, guys, and lastly, I want to take a look at the armor mitigations. Um... Right now, because of the armor having slash conditioning, we're pretty specced out for slash. But once the wall drops in any ad later this week, that's going to give us a 25% flat damage negation to elemental damage. Um, that'll kind of take care of any worries we have for dealing with like the abyss or like any non-ranged elemental attack that's going to be incoming. So that's why we didn't spec for elemental aversion or anything like that. We want to try and spread out our perk buckets as wide as possible for what we're mitigating. So um, going into when we have the wall, we're going to probably want to swap our gemstones for like thrust gems. Um, we're not seeing a lot of strike damage this season. Hammer's not very good and flail really doesn't deal a lot of damage. It's pretty low damage weapon. It's very similar to like void gauntlet. So we're going to be kind of specking for everything except for strike damage. And try and get all of those like fortify caps hit for almost all damage types if possible.